choruses from the rock. The eagle soars in the summit of heaven. The hunter with his dogs pursues his circuit. O oh, perpetual revolution of configured stars. O oh, perpetual recurrence of determined seasons. O oh, world of spring and autumn, birth and dying. The endless cycle of idea and action. And this invention and this experiment brings knowledge of motion, but not of stillness, knowledge of speech, but not of silence, knowledge of words, and ignorance of the word. All our ignorance brings us nearer to death, but nearness to death, no nearer to God. Where is the life we have lost in living? Where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is the knowledge we have lost in information? The cycles of heaven in twenty centuries bring us farther from God and nearer to the dust. I journeyed to London, to the time-kept city, where the river flows with foreign flotations. There I was told we have too many churches and too few chop houses. There I was told let the vicars retire. Men do not need the church in the place where they work, but where they spend their Sundays. In the city, we need no bells. Let them waken the suburbs. I journeyed to the suburbs, and there I was told we toil for six days. On the seventh, we must motor to Hindhead, our maidenhead. If the weather is foul, we stay at home and read the papers. In industrial districts, there I was told of econo economic laws in the pleasant countryside. There it seemed that the country now is only fit for picnics, and the church does not seem to be wanted in country or in suburbs, and in the town only for important weddings. Silence and preserve respectful distance, for I perceive approaching the rock who will perhaps answer our doubtings, the rock, the watcher, the stranger, he who has seen what has happened and who sees what is to happen, the witness, the critic, the stranger, the god shaken in whom is the truth inborn. Enter the rock, led by a boy. The rock says, The lot of man is ceaseless labor, our ceaseless idleness, which is still harder, our irregular labor, which is not pleasant. I have trodden the wine press alone, and I know that it is hard to be really useful, resigning the things that men count for happiness, seeking the good deeds that lead to obscurity, accepting with equal face those that bring ignominy, the applause of all, are the love of none. All men are ready to invest their money, but most expect dividends. I say to you, make perfect your will. I say, take no thought of the harvest, but only a proper sowing. The world turns and the world changes. But one thing does not change in all my years. One thing does not change, however you disguise it. This thing does not change, the perpetual struggle of good and evil. Forgetful you neglect your shrines and churches, the men you are in these times deride. What has been done of the good, you find explanations to satisfy the rational and enlightened mind. Second, you neglect and belittle the desert. The desert is not remote in southern tropics. The desert is not only around the corner. The desert is squeezed in the tube train next to you. The desert is in the heart of your brother. The good man is the builder. If he build what is good, I will show you the things that are now being done and some of the things that were long ago done that you may take heart, make perfect your will, let me show you the work of the humble, listen, the lights 
fade in the semi-darkness. The voices of workmen are heard chanting. In the vacant places, we will build with new bricks. There are hands and machines, and clay for new brick, and lime for new mortar. Where the bricks are fallen, we will build with new stone. Where the beams are rotten, we will build with new timbers. Where the word is unspoken, we will build with new speech. There is work to gather, a church for all and a job for each, every man to his work. Now a group of workmen is silhouetted against the dim sky from farther away. They are answered by voices of the unemployed. No man has hired us with pocketed hands and lowered faces. We stand about in open places and shiver in unlit rooms. Only the wind moves over empty fields until where the plow rests at an angle to the furrow in this land. There shall be one cigarette to two men and two women, one half pint of bitter ale in this land. No man has hired us, our life is unwelcome, our death unmentioned in the times. And the workmen chant again. The river flows, the seasons turn, the sparrow and the starling have no time to waste. If men do not build, how shall they live? When the field is tilled and the wheat is bred, they shall not die in shortened bed. And a narrow sheet in this street, there is no beginning, no movement, no peace and no end, but noise without speech. Food without taste, without delay, without haste. We would build the beginning and the end of this street. We build the meaning, a church for all, and a job for each, each man to his work. I have no idea what the real tune for this is, but um, people have invented distractions. Some of these distractions are based in reality, but they've separated themselves from the spiritual connections that are inherent and we shouldn't just you know it's it's not only about accepting a leader it's not only about you know a particular place of worship or that sort of thing although that may be part of the path but there's something further in doing that than the outer form thus your fathers were made Fellow citizens of the saints, of the household of God, being built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone. But you have built well, that you now sit helpless in a ruined house, where many are born to idleness, to frittered lives and squalid deaths, embittered scorn and honey hives. And those who would build and restore turn out the palms of their hands, are looking vain towards foreign lands, for alms to be more are the urn to be filled. Your building not fitly framed together, you sit ashamed and wonder whether and how you may be builded together for a habitation of God and the Spirit, the Spirit which moved on the face of the waters like a lantern set on the back of a tortoise. And some say, how can we love our neighbor? For love must be made real and act as desire unites with desired. We have only our labor to give and our labor is not required. We wait on corners with nothing to bring but the songs we can sing, which nobody wants to hear sung, waiting to be flung in the end on a heapless useful, then dung, 
You have built well. Have you forgotten the cornerstone? Talking of right relations to man, but not of relations of men. To God. Our citizenship is in heaven, yes, but that is the model and type for your citizenship upon earth. When your fathers fixed the place of God and settled all the inconvenient saints, apostles, martyrs, and a kind of whip snade, then they could set about imperial expansion, accompanied by industrial development, exporting iron, coal, and cotton goods, and intellectual enlightenment, and everything including capital, and several versions of the word of a god, the British race, assured of a mission, performed it, but left much at home unsure. Of all that was done in the past, you can eat the fruit, either rotten or ripe, and the church must be forever building, and always decaying, and always being restored. For every ill deed in the past, we suffer the consequence for sloth, for avarice, gluttony, neglect of the word of the God, for pride, for lechery, treachery, for every act of sin. And of all that was done, that was good. You have the inheritance, for good and ill deeds belong to man alone, when he stands alone on the other side of death. But here upon earth, you have the reward of the good and ill that was done by those who have gone before you. And all that is ill you may repair if you walk together in humble repentance, expiating the sins of your fathers. And all that was good you must fight to keep with hearts as devoted as those of your fathers who fought to gain it. The church must be forever building, for it is forever decaying within and attacked from without. For this is the law of life, and you must remember that while there is time of prosperity, the people will neglect the temple, and in time of adversity, they will decry it. What life have you, if you have not life together? There is no life that is not in community, and no community not lived in praise of God. Even anchorite who meditates alone, for whom the days and night repeat the praise of God, praise for the church, the body of Christ incarnate, and now you live dispersed on ribbon roads, and no man knows or cares who is his neighbor, unless his neighbor makes too much disturbance. But all dash to and fro in motor cars, familiar with the roads and settled nowhere, nor does the family even move about together, but every son would have his motor cycle, and daughters ride away on casual pillions, much to cast down, much to build, much to restore. Let the work not delay, time and the arm not waste. Let the clay be dug from the pit. Let the saw cut the stone. Let the fire not be quenched in the forage. And one of the things that's happened, people say, oh, well, we can improve on the ethics. Um, even improve on the scriptures, which they've come up with different versions, but if you look at the Greek text, I can't really say, we, you can't really say there with its 10,000 something variations, um, uh, variants, um, I mean, that there ever was an original Bible. I'm talking about the New Testament. There's, I mean, what they call the New Testament. Um, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, O miserable cities of designing men, O wretched generation of enlightened men, betrayed in the mazes of your ingenuities, sold by the proceeds of your proper inventions, I have given your hands, which you turn from worship, I have given you speech for endless palaver, I have given you my law, and you set up commissions. I have given you lips to express friendly sentiments. I have given you hearts for reciprocal distrust. I have given you power of choice, and you only alternate between futile speculation and unconsidered action. 
Many are engaged in writing books and printing them. Many desire to see their names in print. Many read nothing but the race reports. Much is your reading, but not the word of God. Much is your building, but not the house of God. Will you build me a house of plaster with corrugated roofing to be filled with the litter of Sunday newspapers? The first male voice. A cry from the east. What shall be done to the shore of smoky ships? Will you leave my people forgetful and forgotten to idleness, labor, and delirious stupor? There shall be left the broken chimney, the peeled hull, a pile of rusty iron in a street of scattered brick where the goat climbs, where my word is unspoken. A second male voice. A cry from the north, from the west, and from the south. Whence thousands travel daily to the time-kept city where my word is unspoken and the land of lobelias and tennis flannels. The rabbit shall burrow and the thorn revisit. The nettles shall flourish on the gravel court and the wind shall say, here were decent godless people, their only monument, the asphalt road, and a thousand lost golf balls. And the chorus, we build in vain unless the Lord build with us. Can you keep the city that the Lord keeps not with you? A thousand policemen directing the traffic cannot tell you why you come or where you go. A colony of cavies or a horde of active marmots build better than they that build without the Lord. Shall we lift up our feet among perpetual ruins? I have loved the beauty of thy house, the peace of thy sanctuary. I have swept the floors and garnished the altars. Where there is no temple, there shall be no homes. Though you have shelters and institutions, precarious lodgings where the rent is paid, subsiding basements where the rat breeds, our sanitary dwellings with numbered doors, are a house a little better than your neighbors. When the stranger says, what is the meaning of this city? Do you huddle close together because you love each other? What will you answer? We all dwell together to make money from each other. Our this is a community. And the stranger will depart and return to the desert. O oh, my soul, be prepared for the coming of the stranger. Be prepared for him who knows how to ask questions. O oh, weariness of men who turn from God to the grandeur of your mind and the glory of your actions, to arts and inventions and daring enterprises, to schemes of human greatness thoroughly discredited, binding the earth and the water to your service, exploiting the seas and developing the mountains, Dividing the stars into common and preferred, engaging and devising the perfect refrigerator, engaging in working out a rational morality, engaged in printing as many books as possible, plotting of happiness and flinging empty bottles, turning from your vacancy to fevered enthusiasm for nation or race what you call humanity 
though you forget the way to the temple, there is one who remembers the way to your door. Life you may evade, but death you shall not. You shall not deny the stranger. And as we build and maintain the outer temples, let us remember that we are to do such simultaneously with our own temple and to allow the spiritual presence of such. I mean, look at, look at Mecca. The diagram at Mecca, it's a psychological representation of our own being. We're enacting our own psychology if we ever go there or, you know. There are those who would build the temple. And those prefer that temples should not be built. In the days of Nehemiah the prophet, there was no exception to the general rule. In Shushan Palace in the month of Nisan has served the wine to King Artaxerxes. And he grieved for the broken city Jerusalem, and the king gave him leave to depart, that he might rebuild the city. So he went with a few to Jerusalem, and there by the dragon's well, by the dung gate, by the fountain gate, by the king's pool, Jerusalem lay waste, consumed with fire, no place for a beast to pass. There were enemies without to destroy him, and spies and self-seekers within, when he and his men laid their hands to rebuilding the wall, so they built as men must build, the sword in one hand and the trowel in the other. Now, certain things seem unfitting or impossible until we try, right? O oh Lord, deliver me from the man of excellent intention and impure heart, for the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Sanballat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite, and Gesham, the Arabian, were doubtless men of public spirit and zeal. Preserve me from the enemy who has something to gain, and from the friend who has something to lose. Remembering the words of Nehemiah the prophet, the trowel in hand and the gun rather loose in the holster, those who sit in a house of which the use is forgotten are like snakes that lie on moldering stairs, content in the sunlight, and the others run about like dogs, full of enterprise. Sniffing and barking, they say, this house is a nest of serpents, let us destroy it, and have done with these abominations, the turpitudes of the Christians, and these are not justified, nor are the others, and they write innumerable books, being too vain and distracted for silence, seeking every one after his own elevation, and dodging his emptiness, if humility and purity be not in the heart. They are not in the home, and if they are not in the home, then they are not in the city. The man who is builded during the day would return to his hearth at nightfall to be blessed with the gift of silence and doze before he sleeps. But we are encompassed with snakes and dogs, therefore some must labor and others must hold the spears. It's not just for us to act, either. It is hard for those who have never known persecution and who have never known a Christian to believe these tales of Christian persecution. It is hard for those who live near a bank to doubt the security of their money. It is hard for those who live near a police station to believe in the triumph of violence. Do you think that the faith has conquered the world, and that lions no longer need keepers? Do you need to be told that whatever has been, and still can be? Do you need to be told that even such modest attainments as you can boast in the way of polite society will hardly survive the faith to which they owe their significance? Men polish your teeth, on rising and retiring, women polish your fingernails, you polish the tooth of the dog and the talon of the cat. Why should men love the church? 
Why should they love her laws? She tells them of life and death, and of all that they would forget. She is tender where they would be hard, and hard where they like to be soft. She tells them of evil and sin and other unpleasant facts. They constantly try to escape from the darkness outside and within by dreaming of systems so perfect that no one will need to be good. But the man that is will shadow, the man that pretends to be, and the son of man was not crucified once for all, the blood of the martyrs not shed once for all, the lives of the saints not given once for all, but the Son of Man is crucified always, and there shall be martyrs and saints. And if blood of martyrs is to flow on the steps, we must first build the steps. And if the temple is to be cast down, we must first build the temple. Now, let us remember that more than all other faith groups combined have people been killed for not being Christian, not being the right type of Christian, uh, media and temples destroyed, that sort of thing. More than all other faith groups combined, this was done by Christians because of their Christianity. Now, you can also say by Christians if you include the secularism, but the secularism is a even more of a persecuting sort of plague, you could say. And one of the things that happens with that is we have, you know, the symbolism and all this sort of stuff that comes from Christianity and other systems of mythology, um, this is what people turn to for their fiction. So why not return to mythology? In the beginning, God created the world, waste and void, waste and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And when there were men in their various ways, they struggled in torment towards God. Blindly and vainly, for man is a vain thing, and man without God is a seed upon the wind, driven this way and that, and finding no place of lodgment and germination. They followed the light and the shadow. The light led them toward the forward to the light, and the shadow led them to darkness, worshipping snakes or trees, worshipping devils rather than nothing, crying for life beyond life, and for ecstasy, not of the flesh, Waste and void, waste and void, and darkness on the face of the deep. And the spirit moved upon the face of the water. And men who turned towards the light were known of the light, invented the higher religions, and the higher religions were good, and led men from light to light to knowledge of good and evil. But their light was ever surrounded and shot with darkness, as the air of temperate seas is pierced by the still dead breath of the arctic current. And they came to an end, a dead end stirred with a flicker of life. And they came to the withered ancient look of a child that has died of starvation, prayer wheels, worship of the dead, denial of this world, affirmation of rites with forgotten meanings. In the restless wind whipped sand are the hills where the wind will not let the snow rest. Waste and void, waste and void, and darkness on the face of the deep. Then came a predetermined moment, a moment in time and of time, a moment not of time, but in time. And what we call history, transecting, bisecting the world of time, a moment in time, but not like a moment of time, a moment in time, but the time was made through that moment. For without the meaning, there is no time, and that moment of time gave the meaning. Then it seemed as if men must proceed from light to light in the light of the world. Through the passion of sacrifice, save in spite of their negative being, bestial as always before, carnal, self-seeking, and always before, selfish and purblind as ever before, yet always struggling, always reaffirming, always reassuming their march on the way that was lit by the light, often haltering, loitering, straying, delaying, returning, yet following no other way. But it seems that something has happened that has never happened before, though we know not just when or why or how or where men have left God, not for other gods, they say, but for no god, and this has never happened before, that men both deny gods and worship gods, professing first reason and then money and power, and what they call life, our race, our dialectic, the church disowned, the tower overthrown, the bells upturned, 
what have we to do but stand with empty hands and palms turned upwards in an age which advances progressively backwards? And the voice of the unemployed from afar off says, In this land there shall be one cigarette to two men, to two women, one half a pint of bitter ale, and so on. And the chorus, What does the world say? Does the whole world stray in high-powered cars on a bypassway? And the voice of the unemployed says more faintly, In this land no man has hired us. And the rest of that. And the chorus, Waste and void, waste and void, in darkness on the face of the deep. Has the church failed mankind, or has mankind failed the church? When the church is no longer regarded, not even opposed, and men have forgotten all gods except usury, lust, and power. And now we, we need to knock it off with this stuff where, oh, well, if they invent uh, their good intentions of inventing stuff that's not true, that's, that's just, that's okay. You know, no, no, dude. Um, but sometimes, uh, but the negligence and the piecemealing of stuff can be even worse than the symptoms, uh, than the systems that people have. I mean, there can be good guidance in there somewhere, but let's be honest, if it's not inspiration, if, if it's not revelation, it's not just, I, I'm, you know, coming up with ideas, it's direct spiritual whatever is, is different than just being provoked. Oh, Father, we welcome your words, and we will take heart for the future, remembering the past. The heathen are come into thine inheritance, and thy temple have they defiled. Who is this that cometh from Edom? He has trodden the winepress alone. There came one who spoke of the shame of Jerusalem, and the holy places defiled. Peter the hermit, scourging with words, and among his hearers were a few good men, many who were evil, and most who were neither. Like all men in all places, some went from the love of glory, some went who were restless and curious, some were rapacious and lustful. Many left their bodies to the kites of Syria, are sea strewn along the routes. Many left their souls in Syria, living on, sunken in moral corruption. And it came back well broken, diseased and beggared, finding a stranger at the door in possession, came home cracked by the sun of the east and the seven deadly sins in Syria. But our king did well at Acre. But in spite of all the dishonor, the broken standards, the broken lives, the broken faith in one place or another, there was something left that was more than the tales of old men on winter evenings. Only the faith could have done what was good of it. Whole faith of a few, part faith of many, not avarice, lechery, treachery, envy, sloth, gluttony,